Hi, this is John Carney, product engineer with Cadence, and this is a how-to video on how to access and use the signal integrity features available with your ORCAD X license. From the ORCAD X layout interface, you can go under the Analyze menu and choose Workflow Manager. This is going to open up this panel over here, giving you access to the impedance workflow and the coupling workflow. Both of these workflows work the same way where you effectively work your way from the top to the bottom of the workflow to set up and run the analysis. There's really not a lot of setup required for either analysis. For the impedance workflow, you have two choices. You can choose net-based or directed group. Both are going to give you impedance values. If you choose directed group, you'll get additional reporting output showing the impedance from a source to a receiver. So first we'll do just net-based. So we'll do select nets. And here you have this form that asks you to pick the nets from the design and you can choose flat or hierarchical. Most people prefer hierarchical because then it's gonna break the nets down based upon the diff pairs and the buses in the X nets in your design. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add all the nets in the design. Unless if you have a very, very large design with tens of thousands of nets, you can probably go ahead and afford to just analyze all the nets in the design. The analysis time doesn't take very long to run this analysis, or you could just explicitly analyze the nets you're super interested in. The point I'm trying to make is there won't be a time hit when running the analysis if you just choose to include all the nets in the design. There is only one other analysis option, and that is if you want to detect and model the coplanar traces. Again, that's just gonna make the simulation time run a little bit longer if there are coplanar traces. For now, I'm not gonna do that. So that's all the setup you need to do, and then you would hit start analysis. You can see the analysis is almost complete. For a design this size, the analysis should run in under a minute to maybe two minutes at the most. From the workflow manager, you can also choose to view an impedance table. This impedance table gives you two different tabs, the single-ended impedance, the other one showing you the differential impedance. And then you have the different columns showing you the number of vias, whether or not it has a reference, min-max typical impedance, the length at min-max typical impedance, the total length, and then the delay on the net. The way users would typically work with this is you could sort by one of these impedance values. Let's say you could sort by max impedance value. And then you could find out, okay, this is the net that you wanna work with. So if you select a net here, then the bottom half of the table is going to break that net down into its different segments. So you can see that net has different segments that have different impedance values at different lengths. And then you can click on one of these segments here, and it's going to take you to that particular segment in the design. So you can really use this chart to really zero into the unusually high or low impedance values that you have in your design. And then as a design, you can determine what you need to do to fix or resolve those things. And you can do that with differential pairs or with single ended as well to zero in on any impedance value segment that you find in your design that you may want to deal with. Now I'll show you how to use these directed groups to get an additional report. First, you can turn off the impedance visions by unchecking this box. So at any time you can check or uncheck that depending on what view you wanna look at. To use directed groups, you can come up here and switch to directed group and then choose to select directed groups. So a directed group is effectively a setting up a from to or a driver and receiver relationship. For example, I'm gonna say from this BGA driver to these two DIM cards, and I'm going to create that directed group and then hit okay. Once that's done, we'll run the simulation again to simulate with these directed groups. Once the analysis is done under view mode, you'll now have the option to choose to view results based upon net-based or from a directed group. Under a directed group, you can still turn on impedance visions, which is going to give you the color coding as you did before, which you'll notice it's gonna look slightly different than it did before. And once we see these impedance plots, you'll understand why. So if I open the impedance plots, I'm going to go ahead and drag this out and make this a uh, full screen window here. Okay, I've docked this plot to the side of the screen. What this is now telling you is that it's telling you for every net in the design, for example, this net here, 
it has a characteristic impedance of this amount for this length and then the impedance changes to a different value and you can then see that for every net on the design so it's almost like you took every net and just laid them flat on a board and then from a starting point to an ending point and then color coded the impedance values on them so you can see this net has predominantly the same impedance value for most of it but has very short impedance discontinuities these nets here just have two complete different impedance values it starts out at this value and then it changes to here there's two impedance discontinuities on this net so that's the bar expanded chart or you can look at the scattered collapse chart and this is the same data just presented another way basically letting you know you have a whole bunch of nets that have characteristic impedance around 42 ohms you have a few particular spots up here that are around the 70 ohm range and then again you can select these things and it'll then take you to that portion in the schematic that you can look at and find that particular portion of the schematic so that's how you can use these additional plots that you get from setting up directed groups now we're going to switch from the impedance workflow to the coupling workflow coupling you can think about as sort of a precursor to crosstalk it's not a full crosstalk analysis but it's a lot faster to run and it's a lot less set up to doing a full crosstalk analysis. Walking down the setup workflow, again, you can choose whether you want to do it net based or by directed groups. We'll go ahead and first do net based. We'll select the nets. And again, we'll just select all the nets in the design. And then you have a few more additional analysis options. Now, since you're doing coupling, you can specify the rise time and the coupling coefficient in the geometry window to measure the coupling. With that set up, we'll start the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, you can then turn on your coupling visions to get an overlay of, in this case, we're showing the worst case. You can also switch between worst case and victim net. So then you can see which nets in the design are highly coupled, again, based upon this scale. It doesn't mean necessarily mean red is an error or blue is okay. It's just showing you the range of the coupling coefficient. And then you also have access to a coupling table where again, you can find the segments that are the most coupled in the design, zoom in on that, and then figure out as a designer if you need to do anything to affect change on that situation or not. 